Hey, how's it going everyone, and welcome to my um, Haskell beginner exercises video series thingy. Um, I'm going to be walking through homework number one of CIS 194, and in this episode we're going to be doing exercise number one. So I'm going to put this link um, uh, in, in, into the video description, of course, and um, I guess let's get started. So big picture, looks like we're going to be doing some validating credit card numbers. I haven't actually done this homework yet, but I don't think it's going to be very tough. Um, so this series is aimed at beginners, disclaimer. Um, if you think that you can do all this on your own, I encourage you to, but if you need some help, here's the place to get it. So the first two functions we're going to write <clears throat> are called two digits and two digits rev. Um, they take an integer and return a list of integers. Two digits should convert positive integers to a list of digits. For zero or negative inputs, two digits should return the empty list. Um, two digits rev should do the same, but with the digits reversed. So here are some examples. Two digits of one, two, three, four equals the list one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four. Two digits rev of one, two, three, four returns the same list, but with the digits reversed. And two digits of zero or a negative number returns the empty list. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to try not to make any assumptions about your knowledge of Haskell or um, specifically the syntactic sugar that exists in the language, so please bear with me if you already know some of this stuff. Um, again, this excuse me, this series is intended for more beginner type programmers, um, at least beginners to Haskell. So anyways, what I want to do right here is do some sort of condi conditional logic where if, you know, n is less than or equal to zero, then one thing else another thing. So it turns out in Haskell we can um, express this in this way using an if <coughs> then else statement or you know expression. Another way we can do this is with a case. Um, but anytime you find yourself writing a case where your um, patterns that you're matching are true and false, that's the exact same thing as an if statement. And I think if I had hlint, the Haskell linter turned on, it would tell me or suggest that I turn this into a, an if then else statement. So for now, we're going to use this if then else construct. So the one thing is. Um, empty list. Otherwise, if I actually have an integer that I want to turn into a list of integers, um, I'm going to use a couple of functions. Um, one is called modulus. That'll get me the um, basically the last digit if I take the modulus, the integer modulus of 10 of a number. Here, I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, and the function is called mod, and it's in the standard prelude, so I don't need to import anything. One two three four uh, mod one two three four of ten gets me the four. And using these back ticks, I can express this in infix notation and <clears throat> get the same answer. And how I get the one two three is just by doing integer division with ten, and um, the function is called quat. It stands for quotient. Um, quotient one two three four ten that gives me the one two three and an infix notation it looks like this okay oopsies so I am going to use a let in statement to kind of make it explicit exactly what I'm doing here so I'm going to say I'm going to bind a couple values to some variables let last digit equals um, n mod 10 
call this init digits and I'll put some example comments so this would turn one two three four into four and that would get one two three out of one two three four in so I have my four that's last digit and I want to using the cons operator which puts this onto the head of a list cons this onto the result of calling two digits on my initial digits which will take that one two three and reverse it into a three two one hopefully that made sense it is recursive and most iterative type functions you write in Haskell will end up being recursive so it takes a little getting used to when you first start thinking in recursion but let's try compiling it, it compiles I know that because I have a syntax checker on so I just wrote to the file and it compiled so let's try it out And this did almost what we wanted, except that, of course, it did everything backwards. And that's because in trying to implement two digits, I wrote two digits rev, which is okay because I wanted to write that function anyway. Okay, so before I write two digits, I'm going to show you a few ways to clean this function up. Um, <clears throat> there's a, oopsies. There's a function called divmod, which does a combination of mod and integer division and puts the results in a tuple. So it gives me both pieces I need in one function. And I can pattern match against that tuple. Notice the, the integer division result is on the left and the modulus is on the right. So I can do um, init digits last digit equals n div mod 10 and it still compiles and reload the module and it still whoops works oopsies okay so um, another thing I can do, um, there's an alternate syntax to let in, which I actually prefer, which is where. Um, so you sort of give the expression first, and then you describe the variable bindings afterwards. And, you know, to each his own, I prefer where clauses to let in. Um, so this is an alternate syntax. Okay. So now I'm going to do um, a pretty substantial change, which is to use um, a, a guard. And it's an alternative to an if-then-else block or maybe like a case. And it looks like this. Get rid of the equals, put a single pipe, and give a Boolean condition. And then an equal sign. And you can give any number of these. And you can finish it up with, you know, a final condition. And the advantage of this over the if then else is if I wanted any more than two conditions, um, I would have to do an ugly cascading if then else if then else if style block. And that is super ugly. So, um, these are tried in order, and um, there is a catch-all called otherwise, which is literally just defined as boolean true. It's no different than true, but it, it reads a little nicer. So that is usually the last um, pattern to match against, because true, of course, is always true. And I only have two conditions, which is when n is less than or equal to 0, then empty list, 
otherwise do this. Okay. So this is about as clean as I want to make this function. <clears throat> and you can of course do this without these long variable names, but I prefer the long variable names. They improve the readability. So the only thing I, ha I have left to do is implement two digits. And I'm going to use a function called reverse. Reverse is a list. <clears throat> so if I take some integer, then if I call two digits rev on that integer and then call reverse on that, that is exactly what I want. Reload the module, two digits, and there we have it. Um, I can express this a little more cleanly. <coughs> um, so I'm basically doing two operations on this integer n um, in a specific order. First I'm applying the function two digits rev and then I'm applying res reverse to the result of that. So I can use function composition, and you can read this as reverse after two digits rev, and it's just like a mathematical function function composition. So um, basically, um, I compose these two functions into a single function, and then apply that to n. And I can even do something like this: reverse then two digits rev on n you know, where reverse then two digits rev equals reverse after two digits rev. But I'm not going to do that. One final optimization I can make is anytime you notice um, some function being applied to an argument, and you take in that argument as a parameter, you can actually express this in what's called point freestyle and get rid of the ends. And then I can also get rid of the parentheses. And this is, um, I'd say, a, a hard concept to get at first. Um, it might not be that difficult. The idea of um, currying and um, partially applied functions. Two digits takes an integer and returns a list of integers, but I define it in terms of other functions, and I, there's no parameter anywhere. And that's fine, because I'm defining two digits as the composition of reverse after two digits rev, which is itself a function that takes an integer. So it's not like the argument is going anywhere. Um, there just is no argument to apply to this function composition. And once I give it an argument, then it will apply itself to that argument. So hopefully that made some sense. Um, but this is um, about as concise as you can get it. So just to show you that it works, um, let's, let's try two digits and one more time, two digits rev. All right, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.